Hey, it's Mike here, and today the dramatic leaked audio from a Campbell's Soup executive that had me wondering, does Campbell's Soup have 3D printed meat in it? Person in the recording is also heard belittling Campbell's customers during an expletive filled rant. We have f that's for poor people. Who buys our I don't buy Campbell's products barely anymore. It's not healthy. Now that I know what the f is, I can eat bioengineered meat. I don't want to eat a f a piece of chicken that came from a 3D printer. Yeah, Campbell's Soup is a classic American company that's done over 150 years of marketing, which was largely all just ruined in 10 seconds of audio. Yep, undoing marketing like this, demon child trying to get you to eat their soup. We have with us tonight, Campbell's Soup. And while this is entertaining, it is also more importantly a story about classism, as we'll hear from more of his clip, as well as corporate power, the industrial food supply, the fear of lab-grown meat or cultured meat, as well as a nice little touch of racism in there. So we'll look into the whole story and really answer the question, is there already bioengineered 3D printed chicken or other meats in the modern soup supply? Let's go. Let's start with some lightning fast background here on these employees. We have Martin Bally, who is the one in the recording, and he is an IT executive, in particular, the vice president and chief information security officer of the IT department at Campbell's. Campbell's has since fired him, but we're gonna go over the timeline and how I don't think they reacted appropriately. But then we also have the guy who did the recording. He was a recently hired Robert Garza. He has no no, uh, no filter. He was just a security analyst. He appears to have only been working there for a month at the time. And then his boss or whatever goes on this crazy hour long rant. And he just probably was like, okay, I'm gonna start recording this on my phone or whatever. But thinking he'd be discussing his salary with Bally, he says, the recording taken in person at a restaurant. And perhaps the stuff that got him starting to record was the sort of racist and classist rants he was going on. We don't have the whole recording, but we have little snippets uh, like this. We have shit for f***ing poor people. Who buys our shit? Millions, I don't know the thing. They couldn't think for the f***ing I'm like, you dumb f and this is how all of the drama started because Garza was like, here is this executive who's making all these crazy statements. So he filed a complaint and within a month he was fired. And this was actually nearly a year ago in early 2024. And the reason this has come out now is because he was building a legal case for wrongful termination. Campbell Soup says that he was fired for good reason, but he claims he was fired for complaining about or just exposing a executive. Garza's attorney saying, this situation has been very hard on Robert. He thought Campbell's would be thankful that he reported Martin's behavior, but instead he was abruptly fired. Yep, he's suing the canned soup company for how he got canned, ayo. He had never had any disciplinary action. They had never written him up for poor work performance. And then get this, they didn't do anything to the executive, of course, after that complaint happened. However, once he publicly released this clip to the news, then they put that executive on leave and then with mounting pressures ended up firing him just a few days ago. And yes, we can verify that it was the voice of that executive, Martin Bally, even Campbell says they did a review and we're like, yeah, that's him. And that's where there's just a whole nother dimension to the story is there was a while where I was like, hmm, could this be AI or could this be faked? I will say there's sort of a unique authenticity to his voice that, I don't really see recreated well with AI. You could still have a voice actor do this and then, you know, what would be the motivation? But it once again made me realize that we're in the era of, is that even real because of AI, which I find really frustrating because then it gives us three or four days to flounder and not really be able to act on anything, even if it is real. All right, now let's get to the actual food science stuff, which I'm personally more interested in. And that is the question of, is there actually bioengineered chicken or 3D printed meat or whatever in here? And while there are bioengineered ingredients in Campbell's as well as virtually all of the standard food supply in the US, the official position from Campbell's Soup is that no, there is no bioengineered or 3D printed chicken or meat in their soups. Campbell saying, the chicken meat used in our soups comes from long trusted USDA approved US suppliers and meets our high quality standards. And I personally think that Campbell's responded in the wrong way to all of this, too negatively. They should have been positive and been like, you want 3D printed meat? We're now selling meat 3D printers that you can get sent to your home directly. But this is where my opinion differs from probably the majority of people, especially the ones who eat Campbell's soup, in that I was almost a little bit excited when I heard that, hey, maybe we're having some cultured meat in the food supply. In this case, it probably would have to be snuck in without notifying people, which would be sketchy. I'd prefer that didn't happen. But I was like, whoa, are we further along 
than I thought. And first of all, I will say this was like a year ago. So guaranteed, no, there was not cultured meat in there. First of all, it'd be way too expensive. But I will say that gap is closing and that is probably why they have now banned cultured meat in seven states, including the one in Florida where they had that official event with all of the cattle ranchers on stage with the governor banning the meat as a potential future competitor, clearly. We actually have a study, this one from 2024, tracking the price of cultured meat all the way back to that $300,000 burger in like 2013, all the way down approaching price parity with sort of conventional beef as well as your boneless chicken. And since then, there's also been another 2024 study using projections for a plant-based medium saying if they scaled large enough, we'd be down at $6.20 a pound, which is the higher end for a boneless chicken. This is a chicken product, but compared to an organic product, that's like an average price for organic chicken per pound. But this is where I think more than anything, this is a story about this growing cultural war and fear around cultured meat, pun not intended, or was it? And we have this guy, this executive, that's probably gobbling up all this fear information about it entering the food supply. And then as an IT guy who must not know all that much about the actual food production at Campbell's, thinks it's happening at the company he's working for. I recently did a video about inflammation and visceral fat, fat around your organs, creates its own inflammation. So wouldn't it be great if we actually had a way to measure that at home without spending $20,000? <laughs> And that brings me to the Hume Body Pod, which is today's sponsor. It is a body analyzer. It has eight points of contact for it to measure your body composition to 98% the accuracy of these medical grade scanners that cost, again, $20,000, you might see at the hospital. Yeah, this thing gives you a bunch of different metrics, including a visceral fat score, so you can see if you're at a high risk there. It also does things like skeletal mass. And if you've been following along, I've been tracking my body composition, especially in the realm of body fat percentage and lean mass. And I can tell you after my vacation, where I was in Europe, not hitting the gym at all and eating all of the good food, I definitely was not looking good. I saw my muscle go down a little bit and my body fat go back up, but since seeing those results and then going back to the gym and really trying to balance it out, I have officially reversed my vacation <laughs> results. So yeah, the body pod has been good for me in the realm of motivation. And then they also give you some AI driven actionable insights to help motivate you. Anyway, if you would like to try it, I should say that it is HSA slash FSA eligible so people can get it really easily in the US. And then there's a link below in my code, Mike the Vegan, which stacks with other discounts to get you half off, 50% off. All right. And the company noting, Bally worked in IT and had nothing to do with food production. But he probably saw something that said there was bioengineered ingredients, which were of course things like corn and sugar beets and perhaps soy limited types of plant products. And then seeing maybe some extrusion machines or something like that of chicken or other meats and going, oh my gosh, it's like 3D printed like an extruder, or I don't know what he really saw, but he wrongfully attributed it to that. I think I cracked it. In the original recording, he talks about the can. Even in a can of soup, I look at it, look at me, pop, bioengineered meat. And I think he finally flipped over a can and saw this label, which says contains bioengineered ingredients. This is the result of a 2016 Obama era law, the National Bioengineered Food Disclosure Law, and mandatory compliance didn't happen until June 2025. So people are just seeing it now for the first time. And I have to say, I get a little bit frustrated about everyone saying how gross and scary and unnatural cultured or lab grown meat is, because we can simply compare that to actual meat production. And I will say, if you're somebody who's a vegan or vegetarian, you're already choosing to not eat animal cells from an animal body. Of course, you're eating some like milk cells and other things like that if you're a vegetarian, but meat eaters do actively choose to eat these animal body cells directly. And then where it gets logically inconsistent is just the grossness of one versus the other. We and this Bloomberg segment on visiting a factory illustrates the disparity well. If this drone was hovering over a slaughterhouse, you would probably turn away before watching what comes next. We like our tasty burgers. We just don't want to think about what went into making them. Medium rare with American cheese, but please hold the misery. This meat factory, though, is different. It's your friendly neighborhood abattoir. And the cells are naturally programmed to double, like I said, every 18, 24, 36 okay. hours. And pretty quickly, you know, in 10, 20, 30 doublings, you're going to get really highly dense uh, cells in here that become, you know, let's say if it's chicken, that's chicken growing in there. You can compare really quickly like A versus B. A being the standard meat industry in virtually all cases, we're starting with artificial insemination, which of course involves gathering the male material first as well, 
also really gross. In the case of cows, there's like a hand up the butt, which I'm sorry, this is really gross, but that's to increase fertility. And then of course we have all the atrocities that happen on the farm, the cages, the living in excrement, the just conscious suffering ability of these animals. They're sent to a slaughterhouse, which of course involves a lot of blood, but it also generally involves a lot of fecal matter getting everywhere, which is largely why we have all of the food safety laws we do to prevent those enteric or gut-based bacteria like E. coli getting into people's mouths. And that really is a tip of the iceberg explanation of how gross the animal agriculture industry is. But then we have B, which is the cell cultured meats, which are either taken from a single feather that is plucked or a small sample from an animal, get those adult stem cells, and then you can just continuously and definitely grow fat cells or muscle cells. And you can do that in these sterilized vats in a plant-based medium that is fecal matter free. We're not gonna be <laughs> culturing fecal cells. And in addition to being free from that contamination, it is also not gonna be passing on respiratory diseases, which are a huge risk, enteric diseases, like these digestive diseases and on and on and on. Like we just had our first H5N5 bird flu death last week from somebody's backyard chickens and other birds. There are a million ways that cell cultured meat is less disgusting than growing an entire animal to eat. And we are seeing really good reviews from tasting events of these cultured meats. For example, Mission Barns recently, somebody said the bacon tastes just like bacon should. And there's a report that people who were given these meats said that they would not want them to be banned based off the taste and their experience <laughs> for what that's worth. However, they were people that were already at the event. So maybe a little bit biased but really the reason I support cultured meat is that we have well, this advocacy to get people to kill and harm less animals. And that's a certain chunk of the population that's gonna be receptive to that. And then we have the rest of the population who aren't going to change. And I would really prefer to just change the food supply and then have them realize, hey, these are also animal cells. This is the same thing. It tastes the same. And then hopefully it will become even cheaper. And that way we can not kill 80 billion land animals per year and other animals as well. And of course, bioengineered means that there's genetic manipulation. He might have been mixing that up a little bit with breeding that happens in the animal industry. For example, we have hens that would lay maybe eight to 10 eggs per year, laying upwards of 300 due to breeding practices. Genetic manipulation, but not as technical. And then we, in many cases, of course, have added hormones. There's bovine growth hormone, which the industry has stopped using quite as much because of the consumer backlash is still out there. But then really the majority of feedlot cattle have hormone implants in them to help them grow faster, according to this study. I don't think that most people are aware of that, but that's kind of along the franken meat aspect and people are generally fine just eating that anyway. I mean, we're talking about the industry that gave us pink slime, which you don't need me to describe in any more detail than that. And people just gobbled it up. That's the stuff that they prefer to eat over a vegan diet for whatever reason. And so I am a big believer that if we can just get stuff that tastes good enough and is cheap enough to people and hopefully even healthier because you can tweak certain things, lower cholesterol and things like that, Hopefully people will adopt it. But enough about culture of meat. This has led some people to say, hey, Campbell should be boycotted altogether because they have this one executive who is mean to poor people and stuff like that. I do think that one person being bad in a company shouldn't always be enough to boycott it. Then we do have the response of Campbell's not firing that guy when people complained about him. I don't know how many complaints there were besides just one guy. I don't know all the details of that, but they didn't care to have any disciplinary action until it was public. But this conversation reminded me of something that is very interesting about our food supply in that we have large conglomerates that own just chunks of the food supply. And Campbell's happens to be one of those. We can see this graphic of the Campbell's company umbrella, really. We have Pacific, which is the one I'm familiar with because they also make things like almond milk and plant milks. And we have other things you might recognize like kettle chips, paste, salsa, we got tomato sauce companies. And here I am in the grocery store, just constantly walking by companies own Pepperidge Farm. I walked by Rao, I walked by Pace, it never ends. So I think it's just a good reminder of how the corporate food supply works. And I also think it's just 
a funny dramatic moment. Like people are probably saying stuff like this all of the time within their companies or just being douches. Executives that are douches is not all that rare, but then somebody actually recorded it and got it out there. And then we also have just the main point of this cultured meat battle that is going on and how frustrating it is to see people express no disgust with the current animal agriculture industry in which looking at any detail of is just absolutely atrocious and then being like, uh, oh, these sterilized cultured meats that wouldn't have all these diseases and fecal matter. Uh, those are actually the disgusting thing that I don't want to eat. Like that blows my mind. I get a lot of people say it's not natural, but we can't appeal to nature here with how ridiculously unnatural our current food supply is and how ridiculously unnatural everything about everyone's lifestyle is as well. So click. Anyway, if you want to try the Hume Body Pod, you can of course click the link below and use the code Mike the Vegan, which stacks up to 50% off only over the next seven days. And let me know down below what you all think about this. I'm sure you have some great points to add, especially in response to the direct audio recording. And of course, feel free to like, subscribe, all that good stuff, and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.